This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Miller versus Alfred. You all have been a couple, known each other for 13 years, and this relationship is in jeopardy, and that's why you brought this case. Tell me why you're here. I'm here today, Your Honor, because I believe my girlfriend is cheating on me with her ex, okay. and I need to know more about what's going on. So you believe the ex is not really an ex. He's a now. Yes, yes, Your Honor. I believe that she's, you know, got something on the side like macaroni and cheese and collard greens, you know? Well, you speaking my language right there. <laughs> All right, Miss Al. Oh, go ahead, love. And you worried that you're going to end up on the side. You're going to be the side piece after a while. Yes, Your That's Honor. That's what's bothering you. Yes, Your Honor. And I, after everything invested, I just would hate that the time and love and energy to go in vain. Okay. All right. Ms. Alford. Yes, the Your ex, Honor. He's accusing you of going back to your ex. You know, an ex is an ex for a reason. Is your ex really your ex? Yes, he is. I don't want nothing to do with him. I don't want no part of him. I'm happy where I'm at. So well, you're saying that this is... that he uh, has no reason to think that you are with the ex? No. That, that's a lie, Your Honor. I, just I was about to say, you went... Record, I wouldn't be all the way here today if I just didn't think anything was going on. Um, there are several signs and warning signs that I've had that brought us here today. One of them being, uh, I went out of town for quite some time. Uh, we had an understanding that we will hold each other down. Okay. And, uh, there will be no infidelity. We'll be here for each other. Once I returned back in town, uh, she gave me her phone to go through. I went through Snapchat. If you are not familiar with Snapchat, Snapchat is basically a social media where It'll delete any video chat and message. You know, as soon as the person reads it, it's gone. So right. you have no evidence whatsoever. We're old, but we're not that old. We okay. know what Snapchat is. I probably I didn't mean to offend you. No, no, you ain't not offended. Come on. <laughs> All right, so there's a section labeled in Snapchat for your eyes only. Right. She puts the passcode for for their eyes only in there. Most of the men that she's dealing with are, or most of the people on her messages are men. So now I'm, I'm thinking, oh, man, what's going on? I get these videos and these pictures, and you talking to mostly men, and one Was of the... she sending them to you? Did you get any of those I didn't receive any of those, because in the beginning of our relationship, Your Honor, I explained to her, that doesn't turn me on. You know what I'm saying? Things that turn me on about a woman is just being a good woman. You know, we can do that in the bedroom, but I would like a lady in the street, a lady in the street and a freak in the sheets. You know what I'm saying? Well... So, they, they've written songs about it, so yeah, we do know what you're talking about. So these pictures and things you saw, what exactly did you see? I seen her grabbing her breast, biting her bottom lip, completely nude. Oh. It's, it was either, it was at least 12 or 12 to 15 pictures of content. Oh. But the worst part... And she didn't say any of this to you? No, none of those were received by me. I asked her about it, and she said, well, that's for old relationships, so why do you still have that on your phone, and why are you harnessing that if you have the full understanding that that does not attract me? Okay, so, yeah. Here, why do you have them on your phone? I didn't have the time to actually get rid of it. I still have videos and pictures from me and my last relationship that I was in. But you knew that you had them because you had them in the special for your eyes only. Yes, Your Honor. And that means it's, like, hidden and ready to go when you are ready to go. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Your Honor. Can you understand why he thinks this is something amiss? I do understand. Especially since he doesn't even like those kind of pictures. He gonna have you. He wants to see you in person. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So yes, why, ma'am. I would just, why would you get rid... I understand why you kind of like... Mm. So that, that was like the first strike. And um, another warning sign was basically in this relationship after that's happened... I had to pray because I went to a lot of people for advice, but I never went once talked to the Lord. So I said, Father, give me a sign. Tell me exactly what you pray. What did you say to the Lord? Father, please show me a sign. If this, if there's anything going on in my relationship, I need to know. Please bring it to light. I can't, my spirit is going to break. I can't deal with this anymore. And then what happened? She's uh, in the gas station. Uh, She has her phone out, and she receives a phone call. Well, when she returned to the call, I asked her, who is this person that you are talking to? Why do you know this person? And who's calling you from this location? She basically says, I don't know. I don't know why they're calling me. I don't know who calling me. Another phone call comes through. I asked her, who do you know? She said, I don't know nobody. I don't know what's going on. 
So when the call comes through, I tell her, act as if I'm not here. Say hello. She says hello. A voice says, I'm out. She says, my boyfriend is with me right now. He said, all right, say less, click. Oh. Now I'm looking at her hold like. On, hold on. So you, Cause you just on. prayed to God to give you a sign. And he don't play. And that word do not come back, boy. You see what I'm saying? It's the almighty, he reveals all things. All things. And so you feel like that was your own personal miracle, your own revelation, your own vision. Yes, Your Honor. Of what God was saying, I'm gonna help you. Yes, you asked, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you spoke that into existence. Yes, Your Honor. So you feel like this was divine intervention. Yes, Your Honor. Wow. All right. So you get this call, you tell her, pretend I'm not here, and she says, when she answers the phone, Hello. And the other voice says, I'm out. And she says, Exact words verbatim, my boyfriend is with me right now. So you say my boyfriend is with me right now because that's always what one says when you get a call. Why did you do that? I said that simply because I didn't want him bothering me anymore. Him I'm who? happy with where I'm at. Who, who is him? My ex, Ken. <gasps> Why did he tell you to say, say less? He didn't even give me the chance to say anything else. No. Well, of no, course no. not. That's why he said, say less. <laughs> what, what was he afraid that you were going to say? I'm not sure. Your Honor. Okay, wait, wait, hold on, wait, hold wait. On, wait. On, wait. Hold on, hold on. What more were you going to say that he didn't want you to say in front of your boyfriend? There's, I'm not afraid of saying anything in front of my boyfriend. I mean, what I'm hearing from her is she wasn't afraid. She wanted him to know, look, I'm with my boyfriend, you know, don't call me. So whatever he said after that, she can't control that. And what he happened to say was, say less. That's, she didn't control that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh what? Uh-uh. He was telling her, be quiet. You don't need to say nothing in front of him. What we would normally talk about, we're not going to talk about right now in front of your boyfriend. That's what that was. But there would be no reason. There'd be no reason for him to have to say anything. Like, say less. He could just hang up. He could do any number of things. I guess what I'm saying is, I mean, you don't have any control over him. You don't know what he was going to say. You can't control that, can you? Right, Your Honor. Exactly. Mr. Miller, have you ever talked to this ex? Yes, Your Honor, I have. Tell me about that. Okay, when we reach out to him finally, after she's had time to get her side piece story together in my eyes. So she's on the she, phone with you too? She uh, ended up getting him on the phone and the first thing she says is tell him we don't have anything going on before I can even speak to the man. Okay, so, now so, I'm just what, like, so, okay, so what happened when you got on the phone with him? Um, he basically said, you acting lame. If I need to come out there and see about you, I'll see about you, just threats. All right, why would you jump on the phone and say, tell him we don't have anything? Because he's, he never gives me the chance to actually speak. So I wanted to tell Ken to just be honest with him. You were telling your ex, hey, I need you to just tell him exactly what's going on here and what's going on here is nothing. Yes, Your Honor. But you do see how this could look suspicious, too. Yes. Like you were setting the stage so he knows exactly what to tell your boyfriend, right? Did you still believe something was going on? I did, Your Honor. While I'm at work one day, she disappears out the blue and uh, she's claiming that she's going to look for this apartment for us. And I FaceTime video call her from 11.30 till 5.30 when I got off of work, not to get any response. I asked her explanation about it. Well, when I went to the apartment, they didn't allow pets, so I didn't stay long. I end up going to the gas station looking for more apartments on my phone. So why aren't you seeing my phone calls? Why aren't you returning my phone calls? These are the questions that I have. So you believe she was with her ex during this time where you couldn't get a hold of her? Yes, it's a strong possibility. All right. Well, there's your side, there's her side, and there's the ex's side. He's here. Ron, would you escort him in? Let me go right up to the witness stand. Good day, sir. How are you? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Uh, would you state your name, please, for the court record? Name is Ken Pittman. My question is, the phone call that you made and said, I'm out. Yes, ma'am. What was that about? What did you want her not to say? <clears throat> it wasn't more or less of don't say anything. 
with me, if I call you and you're with your, your significant other, that's fine. I'm not going to bother you no more. So with me saying say less, with Mr. Miller already, you know, how she told me about him, I already knew, you know, how kind of hostile he was and, you know, he was iffy about other guys that she would talk to and whatnot. So with that being said, when she told me, hey, I'm with my boyfriend, okay, cool, say less. Nothing else has to be said. I'm hanging up. Well, let me ask this, because this is the question that's on my mind. It's on Judge Cutler's mind. I know it's on Mr. Miller's mind. When is the last time that you were intimate with Ms. Alfred? Last time would have to be, I'd say, right before we broke up back in 2017, before I moved actually back to Mississippi. And that was before she got with Mr. Miller? Yes. Uh, to my knowledge, yes. Has she expressed a desire to be with you since you all broke up? No. It's just more of a communication talking as friend-wise. You know, I'm here to let you vent. So where's this Mississippi? You going to Mississippi? Hold on, Mr. Miller. Mississippi, which you come from. Mr. So, Mr. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I apologize. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's the big question in my head. You saying one thing, she's saying another thing. She's saying that you're trying to get back with her and you saying you're not. If you're with the woman and you have doubts that she's cheating on you, that you got to go through her phone, that you got to do this, got to do that, act crazy, don't be with her. Here's what I want to know. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Do you still have an interest in Ms. Alfred? Nope. So you're just being a good friend? Yes. Okay. But, but Ms. Alfred, I'm kind of watching. I think you enjoy seeing them fight over you. I said that earlier as well. <laughs> I said that earlier as well, Do you enjoy watching these two men fight over you? No, I just want the truth to be told. That's it. No. I, you know, I ain't mad at you. I ain't got two men fighting over me. You say you I, don't have... I was gonna make sure you kind of ran through that real quickly. I want to understand you don't have <laughs> two men fighting over you. Okay. <laughs> say it nice and slow so that it's clear for the record. For the record, I do not have two men fighting over me. Okay. But right. as a woman, I can understand why that would be, you know... Ego boosting, make me feel like queen of the world. Mm -hmm. Are you enjoying it? Just say yes. Because I see it. You can say no, but we saw it. We saw you grinning. <laughs> I was grinning because he was being honest. And I'm glad that it's finally getting out and that he's finally hearing it. Because it needs to be told. Because I want this to work out. I really do. We're going to see what the test results say, Your Honor. That's where I stand on it. It's too much flaky, flakiness going on. It's too much. If I can't trust you, I don't need to be with you. If you find out she's cheating, you are moving out and you're done. Yes. If she isn't cheating, you in it to win it. Am yes. I right? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Cullen, we got a relationship on the line. Yes, we do. And because we do, this court has done a complete and a full investigation. At this time, the court will call former military interrogator Lena Sisko to determine, is she cheating? <laughs> For our court record, would you please state your credentials? Yes, Your Honor. I am a former military interrogator. I have been certified by the Department of Defense. Shortly after 9-11, I deployed to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where I interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. So Mr. Miller is concerned about Ms. Alfred's relationship with Mr. Pittman. During your investigation, did you uncover anything about that? Ms. Alford did tell me that she lied to Mr. Miller about having conversations with Mr. Pittman, but that they all focused around her relationship with Mr. Miller. And in that sense, she did tell me um, something that I thought was very interesting. I asked her a question. I said, do you want to be with Mr. Pittman? And she gave me a definitive no. And she was very definitive with it. There was no hesitation. And she was also congruent in her body language. So as someone who's conducted over hundreds of interrogations since 2002, I do not believe that Ms. Alford is cheating with Mr. Pittman on Mr. Miller. And I believe she's being truthful.
Mr. Miller, you came here to get some answers, and we have now heard those answers. How do you feel about that? I apologize for the accusations dealing with this young man, but <laughs> we just, you know, we just got to work on it. You know, I, I got some making up to do, and I don't know, maybe we need to see counseling. We've tried to go see Christian counselors, everything, you know, whatever it's going to take to make it work. You know, that's what I'm willing to do, so. Here, here's what I, I, I... Let me talk to you. You going to have to stop. You got to... You got to... It's... Passion's a beautiful thing. But it is not a beautiful thing when you're using it to beat down your partner. Yes, Your Honor. You all have known each other for 20 years. You've been together for five years. But this relationship is on hold right now because you believe Mr. Walls is cheating. Is that correct, Ms. Yes, Master? Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Walls, you know, how do you feel knowing that your relationship all depends on what happens here today to determine whether you're cheating or not? I'm okay. I, I'm not cheating. I'm here to prove that I'm not. So I think everything is going to be fine after the results are back and, uh, you know, and she finds out that I'm not. I haven't wow. told any lies. I haven't seen any other women. So, you know, that's my story. <laughs> you know, they can win it. So, Ms. Mastin, tell us what's at stake here today. Well, Your Honor, um, I, I've been withholding sex from Mr. Walls for, for a few months now. Um, I kind of came up, come up with excuses when, when he tries and stuff, like I don't feel good or, or things like that. And are you doing this because you believe he's cheating? I do. I, I, for, so, me, for me, just imagining Dave with some other woman is a real big turnoff for me. So I've been having problems with that. And so you've been saying what? When he approaches you, how do you deflect? Um, I, I don't feel good. I have a headache. Um, it's the time of the month. Anything. You're just pulling them all out. All of them. All, all the all classics. The yes, I got a headache. Yes, ma'am. All right. Mr. Walls, I mean, how has it felt, you know, her withholding sex? Did you know she was withholding sex? Uh, yeah, uh, I just thought she was, uh, sick, you know, and <laughs> I don't know. So you, you know, thought she was sick? It, it was, it was bad, you know? Whatever I, I excuse... Trying, whatever you know, excuse... It wasn't she, working. Whatever <laughs> excuse she gave you, you believed it at the time? No. No, I knew something was wrong. I, I just couldn't get it out or she'd never tell me. Okay. How long has it been that you all have not been intimate? Uh, it's a few months. More, more than three months? Yes. More than three That's months? That's a lie. Yes. That's a lie. Okay, you're saying it, it's been about three months. It's maybe. Uh, three months is probably even exaggerating a little. So. Are y'all in the same bedroom? Are y'all yeah, sleeping we, in the same bed? We are. We do. We sleep in the same bed. I just kind of keep my distance and, um... Come to find out, I that's did. a big bed. <laughs> well, I mean, we 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 was ha we went from having sex a, a couple times a week when we first got together um, to not having any for for maybe maybe three months. I mean, how does it feel to be rejected? Do you love her? I mean, what that's are you feeling? Well, it, it feels bad. It makes me feel really bad to be rejected. You know. And to be yeah, constantly keep asking just her what's going back. on, what's going on. You, you, you're not feeling me anymore. What's going on? And she's no, it's okay. I are saying still attracted to me. And and she's just saying it's okay. Oh uh, yes, I am. I just don't feel good. So so now that you found out that the reason she was withholding wasn't because she just wasn't attracted to you or she wasn't feeling well. She was withholding sex from you because she thought you were cheating. Right. How does that make you feel? I don't know. I wasn't cheating. I mean, she's constantly accusing me of it, but I wasn't. I, ne I never have. I can't convince her any of any difference. So, I mean, hopefully this test they did proves, you know, otherwise. It should. This has got to be pretty horrible for your household. What is it? Yeah. Is your household cold now because you all are not together in that way? It, it's, it's put, it's put a, a strain on us. It, it really has. I um, love paper. I always have, and I always will. You know, I hope we can work things out to continue our relationship. Yeah. How do you end up in my courtroom? How does this happen? What made you believe that he's cheating? D Dave ended up in the hospital and had to have surgery. He ended up laid up in the hospital for, uh, like, two months. And I, I wouldn't come and visit Dave until after the visiting hours because I had to take care of things at home. So, a after visiting... Wait, he's in the hospital for two months? Yeah. What happened? He had to have uh, surgery on his back, on his spine. His spine almost collapsed. Oh. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, um, I go up after hours 
and, and visit with him. And there was one particular day that stands out that a nurse, I, I just got in there and a nurse comes walking by the door and kind of backs up and looks over at me and said, I thought you just left. And then kind of looks at Dave like maybe she had said something wrong. Stuck her foot in her mouth, you know? Oh. So that kind of, kind of was like, what was that about, you know? So, okay, wait. You come in and the nurse says to you, I thought you just left. And you're looking at her because you just got there. I just got there. So somebody just left. So something on your face. And so did she look at you crazy or did she look at she, him crazy? After she kind of said, I thought you just left. And then she looks immediately at Dave. And I don't know if I maybe missed a look from Dave to her or her to him or whatever. And then she says, wrong room and, and walks on. So I'm like, there's okay. something not right. Mr. Walls? Uh, who was it that just left your room right before Miss Masson got there? It was a family member, and I, I told her that. She knows that. She knew they were coming to see me. It's the only people that came to see that me was, was her and family that. members. That was it. I think he's lying. Did he you, tell you who the family member was? Yes. Do you resemble the family member? No. Is that a mistake that a reasonable nurse could have made? No. Not no. I don't. Nothing like her. And no. this family member, you don't believe that's who came to visit Mr. Wall? No, I believe she came, but I don't believe it was then. Okay, so you... A couple days before then. Ah, so you said, okay, if it was a family member, it wasn't the night in question. Exactly. So what have you experienced lately that makes you believe that you've gone from this suspicion, this thing that caught your eye, to something that's actually happening? Okay, so um, he's just now able to start getting back to work in the last few months. And okay. um, with my experience in him working before and now, is is a little different. Um, okay. He, he doesn't answer his cell phone while he's at work. He doesn't answer the phone calls that I call. Doesn't answer text messages. And then, he, and then it's here lately. He's coming home later and later and later. You know, everybody has a cell phone on them while they're at work. Everybody. Well, let's find out from him, Mr. Walls. Why are you not answering your phone? Why I are you coming home later and later? I, I never take it with me. I'm up and down ladders. I'm on roofs. I, I don't take the phone. I've dropped a couple phones and broke them, and it cost me a bunch of money replacing them, so I don't take the phone out of the truck with me. I'd leave it there. She knows that. Okay. I don't answer the phone all day, and I won't, and I'm not going to. Okay, but let me ask you this. Is this different from that in the past? Did he take his phone? Did he answer? Did he answer calls and texts? When we first got together, he did. Okay, at some point, he stopped. Was it after the surgery or before? Um, well, he had been out of work for a while, so I, I, I'm going to guess I noticed it after the surgery. After the surgery. When he just surgery. went back to work. And that's one of those things people talk about. Either the person stops responding... Yeah. ...or they're responding, but it's never to me. It's, they're on the right. phone, but it's right. not with me. right. Okay. Right. But, so, Mr. Walls, did we have this drastic change from before and after with your uh, I don't answering the so. cell phone? I don't think so. I think she's exaggerating. I really do. I, I don't think there was no change at all. I've always left my phone in the truck. And, and since I broke a few of them and I had to replace them, I just left it there. And oh. she knows that. I would call her back when I got to the truck. Yeah. Now, that explains the phone. What about you coming home late? She says you're coming home well, late. Well, sometimes I got people's windows and doors out of their house. I got to get them back in there before I leave. You know, I just can't leave their house open all night. So a lot of times that's what I'm doing. I'm finishing up a job. I have to. You see, a lot of times. What about the other times? Because I think that's what Ms. Mass was concerned no about. There was other times. <laughs> well, and I think... What other times was there? So... Where are you and who are you with? That's huh? usually what he tells me. He's, he's, he can't leave people's houses open yeah, or their roof well, open. Yeah, yeah. or That's always, what, that's always his, ex his excuse. I don't, I don't drink or anything like that. I don't go to bars. You know, I, when I leave the job, I go straight home. So you're or saying... Or sometimes I may go to a, a construction, you know, place to pick up supplies for the next day or something like that, you know, and then home. But I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not seeing anybody. Else. But the bottom line, Mr. Walls, is nothing's happening. You're just a working man. Right. And you're coming home... Are you the taking care of business? Right. You know what, love? It, what I, but what I'm sensing is just a lack of communication between the two. Do you all talk to each other? What I, kind of... I question him when he when he finally does show up and come home. I question him, and he says, I, "I'm on his nerves. <laughs> I, I'm accused." You heard her answer, did, right? Yeah, I did. Look, <laughs> you asked, "Do you all talk?" She says, I said, I communicate. Question, no, do you all communicate? Right. Do you all talk? He I'm... says, I question him when he comes home. There's a difference between communication and interrogation. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, if you're interrogating him, yeah, you're getting answers, but you're not having the connection that's required for communication. Okay. And when you're communicating, you're like, love, I don't know what's going on. Talk to me about your work schedule. As opposed to, where you been? What you doing? <laughs> Why you late? That's right. a different flavor, right? Right. Okay. Because he's All going right. into shutdown mode yeah. at that point. And Immediately. That's exactly what he right. does. Right. 
So have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Okay, Your Honor, so we, we share a car together and he takes it sometimes by himself and um, I found a hair tie in it. This hair tie, a big bulky hair tie. And okay. that's not the kind that I use, I've never used, I use this kind. Okay, and you're trying to figure out whose tie is Where that? Where did it come from? It's not mine, it has nothing to do with me, I've never used that kind, I just don't. Mr. Walls, whose hair tie is that? I have no clue. The car was never cleaned out when we, we bought it. We never, I never cleaned the car out. So I, I don't know where it come from. It was either on the seat, came out from the seat. I, I don't know. And you, you don't need a hair tie. I'm looking no, at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't need a hair tie. <laughs> so when you asked him about it, what did he say? Just that. It, it had to have already been in the car. It's not nothing that he did. And, and you're I, just like, but that's just, just another layer. It's just all of a sudden there. Yeah. So, so have you discovered anything else that makes you believe that I there's a, uh, something amiss? I have. Okay. I have also found a little cheap fake nail oh. that was in the car. And as you can see, I have real nails. I don't use these cheap things. And so what did you say to Mr. Walls? Like, whose again, nail is this? Again, I take, him, I take the nail to him. Where did this come from? And again, I have no idea. I've never seen it before. Okay, Mr. Walls, I, I might can give you the hair tie, but <laughs> come on, now you got fake nails in the car? Pop I mean, it up. Same thing, the car wasn't cleaned out. It, it had to been in there. It, it's not from any other woman. I, you know, but, but why all of a sudden? I mean, you all had the yeah. car for a while before these things we started appearing. We didn't have that long. We didn't have that car that long. But why I never they... cleaned it out. I know she did. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no. No, <laughs> I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I, I, Mr. Cullen, I think we got enough right here. I think we got Hold enough. Hold on a second. Let me, let me think about this. To think he's cheating on you now, how does that make you feel? It, it hurts. It doesn't feel good at all. Um, because he, he, he used to tell me all the time that he loves me. And, and we used to be real intimate. We talked, communicated. I know a lot of it's me because I feel that he's cheating and I'm blocking a lot of it, but it doesn't feel good at all. I would love to find out that I'm completely wrong. And, and get it back together. You need to have this block moved out of the way yes. so that you all can move forward. Yes, ma'am. And I guess, Mr. Walls, you, you gotta feel the same way. If you say you're not cheating... Right. Yeah, I do. Yeah, every, every day, you know, I'm like, what's going on? Are you not attracted to me? Because he's not, you know, like it was in the beginning at, at all. So, yeah, I, I would like to get everything out in the open and move on and, and try to, you know, I love April. I want to stay with April. I'm 51 years old. There ain't another one. And, and you're trying to figure out how many different ways can I tell you I'm not cheating? It's right. got to be frustrating to you yeah, at some point, right? Exactly, yeah. All right. Well, Mr. Cullen, I think we got a good idea what it's like in their household. You okay. got, I mean, it's, it's clear they're not communicating. She's not communicating because he's coming home late. She thinks he's doing something other than working. He's disappeared and won't answer his phone. She's found these women's uh, articles in, his, in the car, the scrunchie and the fake nail. So she's like, with all of these things happening, and they've just recently started, for those reasons, she thinks he's cheating. And she's like, I can't continue this way. And he's equally frustrated, wanting to prove his innocence. Exactly. Well, this court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine is he cheating. <laughs> Ron, <please> <laughs> step, Mr. Wolf. Guy Wolf. Good day, Mr. Wolf. How are you? I'm well, Your Honor. How about you? Doing well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Would you explain, please, what forensic voice analysis is? Yes, sir. When you speak, you have AM and FM frequencies in your voice, like on a radio. And when you tell a lie, the FM frequency goes away. Forensic voice analysis works by measuring those frequencies. I can then look at a chart and I can determine where somebody's being deceptive. And you conduct this examination by asking a person a series of questions, correct? Yes, sir. And you ask Mr. Walls a series of questions, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Let's take a look at the first question you asked. Him. Did the hair tie that was found in Miss Maston's car belong to a woman with whom you've had physical sexual contact? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Let's take a look at the next question. Did the fake fingernail that was found in Miss Maston's car belong to a woman with whom you've had physical sexual contact? No. 
What did the voice forensic analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Is that somewhat of a smile? It is, it is. That's a good sign. There was one more question, correct? Yes, sir. All right, let's take a look at that question. Since getting back together with Ms. Mastin five years ago, have you had physical sexual contact with another woman? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Okay, you look like you're about to cry. I am. It's okay. I'm so... How do how do you all feel knowing that this this I'm glad it's, impediment I'm glad it's is gone? Out in the open now she knows that, that I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad we were here to help you with that. And Ms. Mastin, how are you feeling right now? Um, maybe this big because I accused him, but I'm I'm glad to uh to know the truth. I really am. Um, I miss him. I miss the way we used to be a lot. So I hope we can get back there. You all have been together for three years and had one child together. Is that correct? Yes. yes. All right, Mr. Nunley, why have you brought your girlfriend to court today? Well, Your Honor, I brought my girlfriend to court because I had her cousin, one of her cousins came to me telling me that she was cheating on me, and I'm just here to find out the truth. All right, Ms. Stockloffer, what are you here to prove? I'm here to prove to my man that I love that I have not been cheating, and um, when I pass this test, I want him to rub my feet. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm a man of my word. If she passed this test, I promise you, I'll rub her feet. So what's on the line with today's results? Man, it's so much on the line, y'all. I mean, it's like, it's pretty much life is on the line. I mean, to me, because I spent four, uh, three going on four years of my life with this woman. I love her to death. I would really want to spend the rest of my life with her. I was always told that one man's trash is another man's treasure. And I found my treasure, but... I'm not gonna be treated like trash, you know what I'm saying? What does your household look like right now? I mean, how are you living? Tell me, Ms. Stockwell. I live every day arguing and being accused of something that I'm not doing. So that's why <laughs> I came here, came here to prove my innocence. I did not cheat on Charles. So when you all first met, I mean, did you go out? Oh, yeah. What kind of things did you do together? I mean, this is when my grandparents were alive, made a rest in peace. We used to go on double dates all the time, you know what I'm saying? We had sex daily, we had sex daily. I'm, okay. I'm gonna sit here. Hold, hold on. Let's separate yeah, we can't grandparents. Have grand yeah, grandparents and having sex. sex daily in the same sentence. <laughs> no, no let's say it. Much. So you say what we did. We went I, out on a okay. daily basis. We okay. kicked it and well, had fun. Let me, you know let me ask you this. You say you went on double dates with, with her grandparents. Yes. Okay, what kind of double dates? Cause I that's mean, cool. I mean, it's not like that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It was just like more of a family thing. At first, we'd take the kids out, let them have fun, and then we'd stop at a steakhouse or something, you know what I'm saying? It was even times where we just sat on the beach, just watch the sunset, talk about whatever we got to talk about. You know what I'm saying? We didn't do that. But now it's like we don't even do that no more. You know what I'm saying? And that was, it was happy then. So, Mr. Nunley, other than the change in your sex life, why do you believe that she's cheating on you? Well, um, one day I go to my father's house, go chill over there. I come back home. I stop to her house. You know what I'm saying? This is before we moved in together. I stop to her house. I see her cousins on the couch. I'm like, yeah, what's up? She's telling me like, well, you know, your friend here, he in the room with Victoria, and they got the doors locked, you know what I'm saying? No, that's so, not true. So I go to the room, I open the door, I'm like, so what's going on? And my friend tell me, man, dude, it ain't what you, it ain't what it seems like. I was just, I just asked her for a kiss to see where her man was at. And she told no, him, maybe true. later if you're lucky. Now, when me and Victoria first got together, when I first even asked for intercourse, she told me maybe later if I'm lucky, so. This stock okay. offer, was a friend ever in the house with you? He was in the house, but I wasn't in the room with him because he sent his friend to come and pick up some stuff. So the friend didn't follow you into the bedroom? No. Is that true? No. Well, what did you see when you got back? When there? I got, when I went in there, I seen Vicky was laying down with the remote, and he was sitting like directly in front of her talking. Then when he saw me, he turned around with his eyes, but she's looking crazy. You know what I'm saying? But you did confirm that nothing happened. Yes, I can confirm that when I walked in, nothing was going on. Okay, so what other reasons do you have to make you think that she's cheating? Well, on this one day, you know what I'm saying, me and Victoria, we was on kind of good levels, you know what I'm saying, we was chilling. I'm in the crib, I'm like, well, baby, I'm finna leave out, you know what I'm saying, I'm finna go chill with the guys for a second. So I leave, and I come back like three hours later, you know what I'm saying, she gone. Oh, mama, where Victoria go? I don't know, she just stormed out right when you left. Uh, and then she was like, she said something about she was going to her cousin's house. It's a guy over there that's supposed to have a crush on Victoria. 
So you know me, of course. I investigated. I called her cousin. Her cousin tell me, oh, what's up? I said, yeah, what, well, um, Victoria over there? You know what I'm saying? She, um, no, I ain't talked to Vicky in two days. Vicky's not over here. Well, where was she? Uptown in her fake cousin's house. Okay, so she wasn't at a cousin's house. She was at a fake cousin's yeah, house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Where this guy... Man, when I first met Victoria, all she told me was, this is my family, this is this and that. You know what I'm saying? And it's All right, hold true. on. You're saying Miss Stockloffer was at a fake cousin's house. Yes. And at that fake cousin's house was this man who has a crush on her. Yes. Okay, were you at your fake cousin's house? <laughs> No, and I wasn't even around any guys when I told him that I was at my cousin's house. Which cousin's house were you at? A real cousin or the fake cousin? I was at the, my real cousin's house, and we're the same age. Really? Okay, you know, it's the only thing that y'all, your stories have in common is that y'all are there. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, where you were, who you were with. <laughs> All right, do you have any other evidence I sure that do. your girlfriend is cheating? Yes. It was around, I, yeah, I say about spring. It was feeling real good outside. You know, me and her was bonding real good, you know. I'm barbecuing. She bring a little funny-looking guy up to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this is my, uh, a long friend. You know, we went to school together. You would grow up together. I'm like, oh, what's up, big homie? You know what I'm saying? We, we sit down, play the game. We chill, talk about whatever, you know what I'm saying? Come to find out, I see them, you know what I'm saying, low key whispering to each other. I, I walk out the room and get quiet. I come back, everybody looking at me suspicious. You know what I'm saying? So she go to sleep. I go through his message. He telling her, oh, I love you so much. I can't wait till you leave this guy. He's a young cat. He don't know what's going on. He don't know what he's doing. So, Ms. Stockloffer, was he just a friend? Yes, he was. He, he didn't text me that he wanted to be with me. He heard how um, Charles was bickering with me, and he told me that I, that I didn't need to go through that. And what that sound like to y'all? He coming on to you. I see you brought a witness. Yes, my mother. Okay, uh, could you please stand and come to the podium, please? <laughs> Would you please state your full name for the record? Samari Lipscomb. Miss Lipscomb, what do you know about the events surrounding your son and his girlfriend? Well, I love Vicky, but Vicky is a big liar. She's sneaky as hell, and she lied too much. Do you believe that Miss Stockloffer is cheating on your son? Yes, because his stuff don't add up to what she do. Like, the day I was over there, I witnessed, he left, then as soon as he left, she left, and then see her people messy. They ain't no good. They called me. I said, ain't Vicky over there? They was like, no, nah, Vicky ain't over here. I said, well... She been gone, and she said she was going over to y'all house, and this day number two. Sounds familiar, right? And then they was like, then her other cousin called me. She's super messy. And she was like, you know where Vicky was at? I was like, what? where? She was like, Vicky over there at such and such house with this dude. She been laid up over there the whole weekend. These are her relatives. These, These are, are her people. people. These supposed to be her people. See, she vents to her people, which they should be loyal to her, but they use it when she don't do what like they want, they'll come, they tell all her business. My son made his life her life. He cook, he clean, he work. <laughs> he love her, he love her unconditionally. And I'm proud that I raised him to be the man that I am. And I think that it's bogus if Vicky failed his lie detector test. Ms. Liscombe, thank you for your testimony. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, Mr. Nunley. I mean, so far, I've heard about Ms. Stockloffer not being where she says she is or where you believe exactly. she is. I've heard about fake cousins. I mean, you know, everybody's got play cousins. I mean, that's just... Yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody's got play cousins. Do you have any other men that you oh. believe she's cheating with? Oh, yes, the fake uh. therapist. <laughs> She get a check, a text message come through. I look at the phone, I'm like, I'm who is dude? You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? You talking about he love you and all this shit? Oh, that's just my therapist, you know what I'm saying? I say, no. Nah. How do I supposed to feel as a man, you know what I'm saying, to see another man tell my woman he in love with her? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. All right, so Ms. Stockloffer, what kind of therapy are you in when your therapist texts you and says, I'm madly in love with you? He is a, fam a family friend. Was this guy a licensed therapist? No, he was not, but he's a family friend that I talked oh. to. All right, now, did you know this was a man who has said he was madly in love with her? Not until I saw them text messages. Did you have feelings for him? No. You had none? No. Were you, were you intimate with him? No. All right, because Mr. Nunley has these questions about 
uh, your cheating, your whereabouts, and all of these issues that are going on. Uh, the court has engaged the services of cybersecurity expert, Mr. Gregory Evans. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Evans into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Evans, how are you today? I'm doing great. Yourself, Your Honors? Doing well, doing well. Good to see you. Now, see. Ms. Stockloffer was ordered to submit her cell phone to the court for a forensic examination. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Did you find anything? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh. <laughs> First, she was interacting with one guy from just three months ago, and I even have it, the text up here. Uh, oh. The gentleman said, I had fun this evening, baby. Hope you enjoyed the food and me. Tomorrow wow. we should do wow. more wow. to enhance wow. our pleasure. Wow, wow. And she replies to him, sure. And then he replies, okay, see you tomorrow, sleep well. Wow. But it doesn't stop there. The next day at 8.40 a.m., morning honey buns, can't wait to get a hold oh of my God. yes later. And Mr. Nunley? That's crazy. I've been wasting my life basically for three and a half years for this. I mean, come on, man. What, what, what? My age, my age don't prove my love. I don't know what it is. What 20 year old you know that's gonna deal with a 32 year old with four kids? Come on, man. I don't have to deal with stuff like this. I don't. I don't have to deal with this type of stuff. Mr. Stockholm, who are you texting and saying, I'll see you tomorrow? Um, there was the, uh, pretend, uh, therapist. <laughs> But we weren't together. We weren't together. We got back together on Mother's Day. Why is this person calling you Honey Buns? That was my nickname growing up. Get out of here. Your nickname growing up was Honey Buns. Are yeah, my serious? mom used to call me that because I used to eat donuts all day long. Did you just think of that now? You just thought of that right now, huh? That first message was three months ago, and this was two months ago. And in this conversation, he says, you could come here, and then she replies, how I got four kids now. And he replies, live here, start new, and be adventurous with me. So this was a second I don't guy. Hear I no believe more. this is the second I guy. I don't even yeah. want to hear no more. I got my answer. I don't even want to hear that. So, yeah. Ms. Stockloffer, who is it that's asking you to come and live with them, start anew, and be adventurous with them? I, I don't remember, but I believe that it's the one that helped me take care of my son. <laughs> really, really. Mr. Evans, did you find anything else? Yes, Your Honor. Here's another one. Different guy. I'm at work now, on break for five minutes. She replies, OK, T.Y., talk to you later. Just call me when you get off work, she says. He replies, will do. Do you want me to bring condoms? Wow. How long is this ago? So this was less than a month ago, or around wow. a month ago. So we weren't in a relationship then either, huh? Jesus, give me the How story. do you explain he someone person, texting you, this asking you? This person was supposed to help me move, and he always asked, does he have to bring any condoms? And I told him no, and I never slept with anybody. Wait a minute. What person comes over to help you move and says, do I need to bring condoms? If you being helped to move, do I need to bring boxes? Do I need to bring tape? A Do pizza. I need to bring a, a pizza, pizza, a dolly to help move? You don't need a condom to move. Well, but I never slept move. with oh, him. Yep. I never slept with him at all. I always turned him down. Why would you be interacting with a man who wants because to sleep with you? Because when I asked Charles that I needed help to move, he was nowhere in sight. So, so I you... had to move my kid's stuff or else I was gonna lose it. That's, that's okay. crazy. That's just great. Rather disrespectful. I don't care what you say I did. They don't nothing amount to what you doing. You know, since the three years we've been together, I already told her death do us part, but if she didn't pass this test, it ain't gonna take death to apart us. Wow. Well, the court has ordered a polygraph examination for Ms. Stockloffer, and we have those results. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Kendall Shaw of Kendall Investigations into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. Mr. Show, how are you today? Good, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, you conducted a polygraph examination on Ms. Stockloffer, is that correct? I did, Your Honor. Okay. You asked Ms. Stockloffer, since December 2016, 
Have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than Mr. Nunley? What was her response to that question? Her response was no. What did the polygraph examination determine? The polygraph determined that there was no deception indicated. Ms. Doc Laufer, how do you feel at this moment? I love this man. All right, you cannot have men texting you asking you if they should bring condoms. Because if they're asking you if they should bring condoms, they've got an expectation that the use of a condom might be required. Mm -hmm. Do you see that message that's getting out there? You're in a relationship. You're not open for business. And if he's doing something and you say, I'm doing this in response to what you did, that's wrong, too. There is no such thing as I give 50%, you give 50%. There are times in a marriage when you're giving 99.9% and that person's pulling one. That's never happened with you, Mr. Cutler. I want to put that out there. Right. <laughs> but to grown folks do. Mr. Nunnally, what is it that you plan to do with this relationship? I mean, I, hopefully we can we can move forward. I just I, I just can't do it if you're gonna be entertaining nonsense. I mean, I can't sit back and look like no fool either if you physical or not physical. Verbal was enough.